Any series worth its salt starts to divide its fandom into camps the longer it gets. Star Wars has its old guard defending the original trilogy or its revisionist defending the prequels. Star Trek has its Kirk and Picard and Cisco advocates, although Cisco is the correct answer. And in the realm of JRPGs, nearly every seminal series of note, from Ease to Persona to Dragon Quest, has its splits and factions. Final Fantasy is no different, given that it's been around for nearly 34 years. But it's safe to say that ever since Final Fantasy X, which is still technically Technically before the official cutoff for good Final Fantasy games, things have never quite been the same, and you'll find a million and one essays and videos and postmortems claiming to explain where it all went wrong. Final Fantasy XV comes at an interesting point in this timeline. It was the last big mainline game and also a very public train wreck, but it was the kind of public train wreck that still managed to sell 8.9 million copies and garner quite a lot of critical acclaim. And despite its mixed reputation amongst the most hardcore fans, some would even call it their favorite Final Fantasy of all time. But why is it so divisive? You can usually boil down fan complaints to a few key categories. That the game felt unfinished at launch, and that a lot of the planned DLC ended up being cancelled. That the open world feels empty, and that the NPCs and towns feel generic. That the AI is broken and way too easy to manipulate. And that the side quests are boring at best and pointless at worst and that combat is more about flash and glitz than strategy. And don't get me started on the story. So what does Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition do differently? Let's get one thing out of the way first. I'm not sure what the gaming press was huffing at the time of FF15's release, but I think it's safe to say that at times it barely feels like a game instead of an activity generator. But somehow, even despite all that, it always manages to feel cozy. And that means that Pocket Edition, in a way, doesn't have to do a lot to just break even here. Now while it wasn't exactly critically panned on release, there's a tendency to look at Pocket Edition as yet another cash grab in a series of failed attempts to create a marketable universe with Final Fantasy XV. At least that's what the critics would tell you. Between an anime, multiple mobile games, a novel, and the original game itself, the franchise stretched itself thin and exploited and shamelessly tried to convince people to care about its world, and it could be said that Pocket Edition was just another offering in the same trend. But I'm here to tell you that not only is Pocket Edition not that, it's better than the original game. Let me back up. For some, Final Fantasy XV really felt like a triumph. There's so much content and so much story in that game that to compare it to a runt like Pocket Edition almost feels disrespectful to some. But Pocket Edition has the advantage of being an homage, whereas Final Fantasy XV was the mongrel child of a 10-year development cycle reset at least twice with all the hallmarks of development hell. Pocket Edition was given a mandate, however, not just to be like FF15, but to distill it to its purest form and make the FF15 universe accessible to people intimidated by or uninterested in the full game. And it does this not the way you'd expect from a shameless mobile port, but with love and care that belies a much more restrained and focused game design than its older sibling. That doesn't mean it's an amazing game, sorry for burying the lead, but it means that it's an object lesson in focused game design and its failures are much more tolerable as a consequence. Let's talk about these locales. There's a kind of cognitive dissonance in games like Final Fantasy XV, these pseudo open world games that sell you on their incredible size and the amazing open-ended choices you can make in them, only for you to find out that the game is a lot less reactive to player choice and a lot more linear than it seems. Of course, there are certainly some beautiful locations in the original, and that's helped even more if you're playing on PC where some of this footage is captured and you play on the highest settings with loads of graphical hacks and mods. The issue is, they don't amount to much. Like big, beautiful tombs, you get the feeling that once upon a time, real people actually lived here. But not anymore, since they mostly don't talk to you anyway. And this isn't helped on launch systems like the PS4, where in addition to the general low-grade feeling of the thing, there are some pretty hilarious graphical glitches and compromises. Towns and hub areas in Pocket Edition couldn't be more different. Not only are they cuter and cleaner looking, but they feel like what they actually are, like what all RPG towns always were, gestures, hints towards something greater. Like the RPGs of yore, when we're in Altitia, we know that it's supposed to be huge and Byzantine and breathtaking, and it still is, but in the way that a very well-made cardboard cutout of a whale is in a primary school play about Jonah and the whale. 
we know that the props are stand-ins, and our brains accept that. The problem with AAA design is that it forgets that this doesn't stop being the case just because the graphics get better. It's just that this class of designers wants to be like the map makers in Borges' famous story. So excited were they to build a realistic map of the world that they kept increasing the scale and making it bigger and bigger and bigger until their model ended up overlaying the world itself, crushing it in the process. Pow! So in that light, a word about cuteness. For many fans, it felt like doing violence to the original game's seriousness and realistic look to shrink the kids in this way. That joke dates me. As a longtime Final Fantasy fan, I have hard news for you. Final Fantasy games have never been serious. I've cried my eyes out at Final Fantasy VI's opera scene. Draco! I've shed a tear for Vivi in Nine. I even felt butterflies in my stomach when we found out what Yuna's real mission was in Ten. not to mention Titus's real identity. Or Titus. Titus? 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 Tida? Even Noctis's post credit speech had me going. I kind of wish the whole game felt like that one scene. But the point is, these are melodramatic, soap-like fairy tales that tug on our heartstrings like a disgruntled baby Marlboro asking for lunch because it can't cook for itself. Not philosophically minded stories like the aforementioned Borges' work. And it's not even that I don't think games can aspire to that kind of profound and complex storytelling. They should and they can. But I just don't think that's always what they're good at. I mean, Nomura wanted this to be a musical at one point, so that should tell you all that you need to know. And as a fan, I have to say that while I love the world building, I think very few Final Fantasies could pass a first semester writing class. Don't come for my Final Fantasy VI though. By retaining all the recorded dialogue from the original game and deploying it in this new light, including some impressive miniature diorama style shot for shot remakes of seminal scenes from the original game, we get something more akin to Japanese bunraku plays or other puppet shows and mask rituals where the deformed, childlike, and bizarre becomes a kind of staging ground for cyclical, cosmic stories of life and death and birth and creation. For a game that spends so much time hand-wringing about the cosmogony of its universe, you would think that the original FF15 would have been more aware of the need for legendary tales to be more... legendary and less aimless. So yeah, sometimes you do get scenes like this in Pocket Edition. It's so hard. But I'll tell you what, Aranea doesn't look so out of place anymore, and neither do the main characters for that matter, so that's fine by me. For all its innovation, Final Fantasy XV feels clunky. Sometimes it's hard to get your teammates or even Noctis himself to do what you want him to do, and that's not to mention that with the stack of potions, death is a near impossibility making every battle not a tactical question, but one of just endurance and of making sure that you've stocked up on your reserves. Pocket Edition's main sin in this regard is that, like the original game, it's too easy, which makes sense given its goal, to allow players to experience the story. But it's the kind of problem that isn't quite so baked into the very structure of the game, not as much as the original at least. In fact, for the first five or six chapters of Pocket Edition, death is a very real possibility. And not because combat is particularly challenging, though it can be, but because there aren't as many chances to artificially buff your character and get rich or die trying. Aside from a standard template of cactuar trophies and buried treasure quests in all of the main hubs, there are vanishingly few ways to distract yourself from the main game. And if you're someone who wants the combat to stay dynamic and compelling, I would recommend not even doing any of this already meager side content and instead allow yourself to sweat a little and push this very simple system to its limits. And that battle system itself is quite frankly brilliant. Rather than feeling dumbed down, it feels on par with other action RPGs like Ease. I should add that I played Pocket Edition on the Switch. I've tried the mobile version and I don't think I'd be saying any of this if I had to tap constantly just to perform basic tasks. 
The point is, for me, combat feels engaging on a controller, and the biggest problem here, at least on the Switch version, is not taking advantage of the D-pad. And for all versions, the fact that you need to cut away from combat in order to use potions, which was actually slicker in the original game. This game gets close to greatness, and a smart hacker or a kind developer could adjust a few sliders or add a hard mode, and it would be a very compelling and competent mobile action RPG with none of the arrogant swagger of what it looks like a Death Cab for Cutie themed Diablo clone. Unfortunately, being unable to avoid 100%ing games myself, by the end of it, with all the Cactuar trophies and all the side content under my belt, I was actually able to hold O to win. Only in this case, it was Y. A more challenging game would have turned this from a passive stroll through the game's visual novel to a harrowing journey that had to be earned at every step and feels as epic as it wants you to believe it is. So yes, sorry if you feel robbed, tricked, and or oversold. I'm only following in the best traditions that Final Fantasy XV laid out for us. The truth is, as I've said, that Pocket Edition is not an amazing game. On its own, it's probably no more than mediocre. But in comparison to its predecessor, it's a lean little package that has the music, voice acting, and overall polish of a game that's far above its weight class, and it shows. In reality, I think I'd recommend this for people who've already played the original game, or for newcomers who are getting sick of the original and need something to refresh their sense of what the game is all about. Like both games tell you in their title screens, these are Final Fantasies for fans and first-timers. Only here that subtext takes on a new meaning. Whereas in the original game, this was supposed to be a kind of call for a return to form, which it definitely wasn't, Pocket Edition is another beast entirely, and it should never be anyone's first Final Fantasy game. For that, I would take 6 and 9 as acceptable answers. No, I think here we should choose to interpret it slightly differently, that what it's saying is that it's a Final Fantasy XV game for fans and first-timers. That is, for people wanting another shot at being fans and first-timers of this game, which could have been amazing, and of the series which we desperately need to be amazing again. Let's keep our fingers crossed, and our stories melodramatic. I know we'll all stand tall. You guys. You guys are the best. Oh.